Okay, so let's take a brief moment here to understand where Adonis ends, where inertia takes over, and then what's passed along to view. So the easiest way to do this is to get at least two routes set up. So let's go ahead and do this. So we're not going to focus at all on authentication today, but we are going to go ahead and just create a login page. Let's put this inside of an auth directory and the component itself will be called login. And then we can get rid of the data that we are passing along to here. Whenever it comes time to actually do the login page, we won't need to do anything like that. Let's go ahead and create this. So a directory called auth login.view. Let's create a template. And just for brevity's sake, just put a label in here with login. So let's stop here, take a look at this in the browser. So if we go to our login page, keep an eye on the inspector down here. If I hit enter, the request went all the way through the server, it hit our login route, and then it called our inertia.render. So you might be wondering what this inertia.render is doing, and you might assume that it's rendering out our page and everything like that. In actuality, it is rendering out our page on the first request. However, it's not rendering out the whole page. So we have our login here. If we take a look at the inspector here, we can see that we have a div with an ID of app, our data page that has the initial information for the page itself. And then inside of that is our component, content, which is our label and login. So although on the first render, inertia.render is providing the entire HTML information, it is not instantiating our view application on the server side. That will happen whenever server side rendering becomes available. But at this point in time, it is not available for view with the adapter. So this is the equivalent of a single page application. So if we take a look at our network request, go to our login, take a look at the raw request response and head on off to the end. You can see that the div ends with no content inside of it. It is strictly just the div with an ID of app and our data page with the information inside of it. So on the initial render, inertia.render is providing our app.edge information, and it's providing that for our app content. This at inertia component is providing the div with an ID of app and the data page. The inertia.render in itself is at this point in time really just providing the component name and any data that we might pass along to it. And it's bundling that up and providing it into our view application as this data.page. So from here, whenever view is instantiated, if we take a look at our view inspector here, Inertia has a component that it will always inject at the root of our view application. And this component is what is reading our data.page information and providing it into our page as the default state. Additionally, on subsequent requests, this inertia component is also what's swapping out the active page that's being displayed, kind of acting as our client side router. However, at this point in time, we don't have any links going to or from any particular pages. So we have to come up to our URL, type in the new page, hit enter, and everything is re-requested. So let's go ahead and fix that so that we have some client side action going on. So let's jump into our home page here and let's go ahead and import Inertia's link. Just like with view router, Inertia has its own linking component. So we can import link from at inertia.js, inertia view three register this as a component within our page here. And let's do link with an href and we'll call this login. And the href itself should go to slash login. And we could do the same thing on our auth page here. So let's do script. We'll just make this one a setup. We'll import link from at inertia.js, inertia view three. And then let's wrap this in a div so that we have one single root level component. And let's do link href slash home, home. Okay, so if we come back into our page, so if I go ahead and click on login, keep your eye on the inspector down here and watch what refreshes. So let's click login and you'll see the HTML in itself stays. The only thing that's swapped out is the contents of our app. Again, if I click on home, the same thing happens. Just the content of our app is swapped out. So we're no longer doing a full request. As before, whenever I was swapping out the URL's path, we were reinstantiating our view app every single time that we made the request. Here, since we're using the inertia link, the only thing that's being swapped out is the actual page that's currently being shown in the HTML for it within our inspector. We can take a look at this at a couple other places. So we can take a look at it in the view inspector here. You can see inertia will stay and just the login component will swap in and out. So home, login, home, login. And then if we take a look at the network requests, you can see there's a get request going off for each time that I clicked on that link. And if we take a look at what that's grabbing, 
You can see the response here is the component, which is the auth slash login. So it's the path to find our view component, the version of our application, any prop data for the page in itself, and then the URL. If we take a look at the home page, you can see the only thing that really changes here is the component name, the URL, and the props actually provided for this page. So whenever we click on the inertia link, a request is kicked off to the server, but instead of providing all of the HTML, all of that's doing is grabbing the actual data that the route is returning back and then injecting that into our new page component. This unlocks a lot of power and gives us the capability that we'll see later on to request only specific data anytime that we need, might need to refresh or insert a new page. So the key takeaways from this lesson are that the app content in itself acts as a single page application. Nothing on that is rendered on the server side. It is strictly client side only, especially at this point in time where SSR is not currently supported for view three with the adapter. And then the other note is that whenever you're linking to and from pages within your application, be sure to link using the link component from inertia anytime that you're linking internally inside of your inertia application. For example, if we add another link here as an anchor tag, that goes to our home page and we click on that. So let's go to our login page and now we have this anchor home link. Keep your eye on the inspector down here. What you'll notice is that we did a full page refresh instead of doing just the application component page refresh that we're looking for. So stay away from full page refreshes by using the inertia link.